When I was at school, I dreamed of being an astronaut, but so many people told me that it wouldn't happen that even I started to believe it. I'm Jackie, I'm a particle physicist and mathematician, and I'm an aspiring astronaut. I'm a senior teaching fellow at a university and I work in the computer science department. A senior teaching fellow is basically a fancy way of saying a teacher at university. We do matrices, integration, differentiation and linear algebra, which are all concepts that you'll start to learn in your A-level maths. To study computer science at university, you have to have a strong background in mathematics. It doesn't matter if you haven't got any programming experience, we just want strong mathematicians who then we can teach to be programmers. When I was little, I really wanted to be Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. I wanted to be an explorer. But exploring tombs was probably not good for me because I had an irrational fear of spiders. Swimming was also not my forte, and so exploring the sea was probably not a good idea either. And that's when I thought, where can I explore? Not the ground, not the sea, maybe up in the sky, maybe even further, maybe space. And that's when I decided that I wanted to be the Lara Croft of space, an astronaut. I really liked maths at school because it was a way of solving problems and problem solving was something that I absolutely loved. At school you might think that things like ratios, percentages and algebra aren't things that you're going to use in everyday life. But actually when you leave school you'll realise that you need these things all the time. At A level I wasn't really sure what to pick because I enjoyed so many subjects but I picked those that I loved the most which were maths, further maths and music technology. I also studied history as well, but I wasn't really enjoying it as much as I'd hoped I would at school, and so I ended up dropping that after a year. Anything that I did find difficult, I've just practiced, practiced, practiced until I got it right. Just like swimming, I guess. But to be fair, I did find A-levels a bit of a step up, and it was those worded questions that I had to think more about and work a little bit harder on. I completely understand when people say that they don't enjoy maths or that they hate the subject. But with practice, anything is possible. If you just push yourself past that barrier, then practice makes perfect and eventually you'll actually start to enjoy the subject. My mum and dad had never been to university, no one in our family had, and so they didn't really understand what it meant to get out of student loan or to be in debt. We had quite a few arguments actually about me being in debt and so I'm quite a stubborn person and I said okay fine I'll work I'll save up for the fees myself and actually being stubborn is something that's helped me quite a lot in my career. That's how I became a youth worker at the age of 16. It's the type of job where you need to lead by example and so if there's an African drumming workshop going on you need to be the first one to pick up the drum and start drumming to get everybody else involved. It really pushed me out of my comfort zone. It's still my dream to become an astronaut and I'd absolutely love to be the first person from Liverpool, the first scouser in space. It's something I've become even more passionate about since taking part in BBC's Astronauts Do You Have What It Takes. Although I did well and got pretty far in the competition, it came out that I wasn't a very good swimmer. The whole experience was amazing and I haven't given up on my dream to become an astronaut. I've even learned to swim and go swimming every day before work now. You don't need to have a maths degree to become an astronaut. A STEM degree definitely helps, so any degree in science, technology, engineering and maths. But at the end of the day, you do need to have a good grasp of your logic, your reasoning and all of the mathematical concepts that you learned at school, which will help you get into space and back from space safely. For example, if we think about when you've been living on the International Space Station for six months, you're about to come home, you need to make sure that you pack your capsule just perfect so that the centre of mass or the centre of gravity is just right. If it's slightly off, you can come in at the, just the wrong angle and put everybody's life in danger. If I could go back and give myself some advice, I would say be more confident. At school, I really loved maths, but I didn't really tell anyone. I used to keep it really quiet because I didn't want people thinking that I was a nerd. But I would say, if you love maths, be vocal about it and be proud. Without my maths, I wouldn't have got anywhere near where I am today. And so if you're thinking about taking it for A-levels or you're doing it now at the age of 17 and 18, it's going to open a lot of doors for you. Whatever you want to do next, every bit of experience that you pick up along the way will help. You might not think that it will relate to anything that you want to do now or in the future, but believe me, it will. 
All of my experience as a youth worker has helped me now with working with students as well as with my confidence. Doing cheerleading and being on the cheerleading team for my university has helped me with astronaut training in ways that I didn't even think were possible. So with my balance, my coordination and with my teamwork. And learning Russian has helped me understand how difficult some of my students find learning new maths concepts at times. All these dreams and hobbies that you have as a kid and throughout your life will help to build the person that you're meant to be.